Hey guys, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And today I'm going to talk to you about my retro consoles. Uh, I made a big mistake back when I was in probably my late 20s, early 30s, and thinking that my kids never play these games anymore, so I need to sell them off in a garage sale and at least make some money off of them. And it is something that has bugged me for a long, long time now. Um, so this past month or so I've decided to go on a hunt to get all the old consoles that I had before and get them back to my possession again and I'm creating this new retro room and it's not done yet I'm still in the middle of it but part of my retro room is going to have the consoles that I had when I was in my early 20s and no I've not given up on my good old Commodore 64 in fact I credit the Commodore 64 and you know giving me the love for video games and video consoles and so forth and and continuing that passion so after I got my Commodore 64 and probably had it all through the 80s and in the early 90s these other consoles started to come out and my very first one that I got and I just picked up again recently is my Sega Genesis. So the Sega Genesis, uh, huge fan of Sega. I was a Sega guy when I first started off. You know, they had, you were either a Nintendo or Sega uh, guy and I fell into the Sega camp. Um, couldn't say the same for my kids. My kids fell into the Nintendo camp and loved everything Nintendo. But there was something about Sega that just I really, really liked. So I picked up the Sega Genesis in my retro hunt here just recently. And now I'm trying to collect the games that I used to have for it. One of them you can see in here, Vander Hollyfield, was my favorite boxing game on the Sega Genesis. I thought it was so cool. Um, of course, I had to go back out. Of course, I had to go back out and get the original Sonic that comes on it and of course who can forget the sound when he first turned on your Sega and you got the Sega, Sega. and it was it was just something that you always remembered so I had to pick this one back up again along with this console and I think I got it for uh, I would say 40 40 bucks so I think I did really good on there not a bad price now what I'm still missing with my Sega Genesis is I used to have the Sega CD that went with it. So used to sit right on top of it, had the Sega CD, and that's a piece of the puzzle that I'm still gonna have to collect, but I was happy to be able to pick up the very first console that I had after my good old Commodore 64. So glad to add that one to my collection. Now sitting next to it, and right here is the Sega Saturn. And the Sega Saturn, I love the Sega Saturn. I know it wasn't a hit for a lot of people uh, and it wasn't the biggest seller for Sega, but I loved the games. I thought the graphics were amazing. Um, the Daytona USA was one of the games that came with it along with, um, it was a cop game and a fighting game, Virtual Fighter and uh, the, the game it up. anyway so i want to collect the games that i used to have for it and of course if i get something additional that's fine but i found this sega saturn online um, i was looking for one for a really good price just because again i don't want to break the bank getting these different ones but i don't know if y'all been following the retro market it's just been going through the roof um, and so the prices are just going up, just like in the Commodore 64 world, I am getting, these prices are getting to be ridiculous and games are getting ridiculous. So I did not go, you know, money, no object or anything. I went cheap. So I had to find a, a system that was affordable or if I could get it, you know, way before below value if possible. So what I did is I hit a lot of garage sales. 
Um, I looked for old systems that uh, my parents might still have at their house or along those lines so I didn't have to go out and buy all these. But my Sega Genesis and my Sega Saturn, there's one more Sega that I need to get is the Sega Dreamcast. Um, that was more my older son's games, but I did play games on there, the, the, the Crazy Taxi and Shinami, I think it's Shinami. Uh, and, and anyway, so that's another one that I would love to get, but very happy to start my collection again in retro collecting, getting my Sega Genesis and my Sega Saturn. And then up top, I've got my Nintendo collection again. So uh, luckily I've, I've been able to find most of these already. So uh, this one over here, is my newest pickup. I just got this a couple days ago and this is the Nintendo Entertainment System obviously. I actually never owned it. Uh, I, my kids never owned it. Uh, when this was out I was still all Commodore and Commodore was the best for me so I had no reason to get it but I saw this the other day at one of the retro stores and they had my Maniac Mansion and they had uh, NES in there, uh, in there and they had it for sale for like $46, 50 bucks. And so since I did, just did a video on Maniac Mansion, I thought it'd be really, really cool to get the system, to be able to check it and to be able, without an emulator actually play the game. So got a NES for the first time in my life two days ago. Now, Super Nintendo is a little bit different. Super Nintendo was the first uh, system for, for my son back in the 90s. Uh, he loved this game, uh, this system, Donkey Kong Country, all the different games, Mario World. Uh, they, these, this system was hugely popular back then. Mine was not this yellow. I know some of them yellowed pretty easily, and uh, this must be one of them that did, so definitely needs some retro brighting. But I recently picked this one up too. Paid a little bit more for it. Paid about a hundred bucks for this one. And in the games, uh, she actually had about 10 games that came with it. So I thought it was worth it, but that one's actually uh, really cool. And then I also got the Nintendo 64 here. And this Nintendo 64 also got it for a really good price. Found it in the, I believe the Facebook market. I don't remember the pricing I did on this one. It only came with three games. Um, but you had to have the Nintendo 64 again because my son went from this one to the Nintendo 64 and again a lot of cool games on it. I don't have a lot of games yet. This one only came with three and I haven't collected any more. But I had to keep the process with the Nintendo. And then last here is the GameCube and we actually have uh, our original GameCube from when my kids were uh, playing this back when uh, they were playing Animal Crossing on here before now everybody plays it on the Switch but Animal Crossing on here and of, of course we went from the GameCube to the Nintendo Wii and so forth but that's getting a little bit more uh, we own the Wii, we had the Wii U, we had all that you know the Xbox 360 and all the PlayStation and so forth but that's not as retro to me I like the older systems I'm trying to just stay in the range nothing older than that um, I also have my PlayStation uh, 1 up here and luckily I kept some of those games and my oldest son held on to those games even though I sold my PlayStation 1. So I was able to get my Vagrant Story back and my Final Fantasy 7. So good stuff there. I got it for five bucks at a garage sale. So been hitting garage sales, been looking at different things, love hooking it up to this old retro TV that I got in that. Uh, Canadian Commodore uh, video if you haven't watched that yet that's where I got this from love the antenna ears on it just to make it a little bit more retro I wanted to share with you guys what I've been up to on these consoles and like I said just very very happy to what I've got so until next time thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive yeah!